Hello and welcome back to another review where today's model is the Batman Spectrum Peterwitt Streetcar in the, in the Baltimore Transport Company livery. This is a very interesting mock vehicle so let's get into the review. So I've had this model for, for a few years now and, and I got it for a very cheap price of £62. £63.95 to be precise. Um, these models now on eBay sell for about £153, which which I think is quite extortionate for a, a, a product like this, really. Um, I think it doesn't deserve to be sold for more than £120. It, it is a good product, but I feel like it shouldn't be being sold for what it is, especially considering that most of these models are from the United States and, and already have £25 extra postage costs. So... Let's unbox this model and see what we've got. So from just looking at this box, it, it is really it is a really nice box uh, with some very nice diagrams of some locomotives. I don't know what they are. I don't know my American logos except for Big Boy and a few others such as the GP38 and the SD40. But anyway, uh, the box is a very nice red and these diagrams are in a white. The writing is in is in gold with a Spectrum logo up here. Uh, along with a bigger Spectrum logo there and some other writing about how Spectrum is made to achieve the most highest quality of finishes which it does. On the back we have the Batman logo uh, along with Batman trains and uh, other things uh, and the weirdest thing is we've got a Batman Europe sticker on the back here uh, uh, with their uh, English um, headquarters. We've got authentic, authentically detailed model not recommended for children under 14 years of age. Uh, we've got more gold writing about the warnings, more diagrams up in the corner here of another American loco that I do not know. So, finally, let's unbox this thing. So let's get this thing on the ground and it just comes off like this. See, solid box, can't be squished. Let's move that out of the way. Now what you're left with is a tram in an absolutely massive ice cube pa packaging. So, as you get deeper and deeper into the box, you can just see how amazing this model is. It has an amazing finish and um, amazing details as well too. Another cool feature about this model is that, is that the fact it can run on DC, DCC and overhead wires. And, and you don't have to reprogram anything for it. Uh, just change the switch for overheads and it can happily switch between DC and DCC without switching anything so let's take the cover off for the ice cube once again very sturdy not breaking that get that out of the way now then we're left with the model exposed to the air now then the Baltimore Transport Company livery is absolutely striking in, an, in a yellow red uh, and some orange highlights this this tro this trolley trams number is six one six one one nine. Um, this one is preserved, I believe, um, and is as I said, it's a Peter Witt streetcar. Uh, these were around in the nineteen twenties, nineteen tens, that sort of era. Era. Um, so let's get this thing out of the box now. No more messing about. If you'd like to come out, one, one second. I've got it out, I've got it out. So, there's the box. You've got a blanking chip in there, just in case you want a blanking chip. I don't know. So, here we have the tram in my hands. Um, so, this is different from the scale that I usually model in, which is OO, which is 1 to 76 scale. But this is HO, which is 1 to 87 scale. So, it is a lot smaller than most of my stock. And, um, well... It is just absolutely amazing for what it is. It is absolutely tiny, yet packs so much detail, such as the windscreen wiper, which is uh, moulded into the windscreen, not separately fitted. But as you can see, we've got some stuff. We've got the headlight, 6199, the number, and then we've got front entrance, front entrance um, decal. We've got Entrance decal up there, then exit. This tram was unique because it had an exit, an exit, and an entrance door, which was quite unusual for the time when it was first introduced. Moving on to the rounded end, we've got the actual trolley, 
trolley um, stick, as I like to call it. Yeah, it comes up like that. Has a very nice uh, string which imitates the wire. Just going to put that back down. How it stops being from sticking up is this just little hook. So moving back onto here, we've got the thing where the wire is, headlight, and other number with a nicely painted red bumper. We've got some separately fitted detail, which are these little rails protecting the indicators and rear lights. So that's very nice. You've got some very nice glazed windows with some detailing, such as the break where the windows would open. Moving on to the roof then, we've got the trolley once again. We've got this electrical wire running into the trolley. We've got this thing. Don't know what it does, but it does things. And then we've got these nice vents here along the tram, basically. Un unfortunately, these um, vent holes are um, decals. They're not moulded or like holes, actual holes. But um, the overall finish of this tram is just absolutely amazing. We've got everything that you want from this such as the painted painted headlight with the right colours and um, I live in the UK so um, I'm not going to be able to see this anytime soon but I do want to go out and see one of these in action um, we got some more breaks in the windows and stuff the doors look to be very accurate, I've looked at images of these it looks to be accurate got some nice line work going on, yes line work we love it um, some other smaller details include these bolts, bolt moulds, which are very nice and are often seen throughout the um, modelling world, as you can say. Moving back on top, the trolley actually sits on a raised piece, just here. And um, the, the trolley actually has four springs in it. Um, moving on to the undercarriage, basic. One thing that I like this, about this is it's easy to oil. The gears are already exposed. I've actually just oiled this. Um, but um, here we have the track and trolley switch, which you can where you can switch it between track pickup and or trolley pickup. We've got the DCC on board sticker, just in case you wanted to know that. We've we've actually got a spacer, a speaker, so I'm guessing you can put sound in this, which is quite nice. We've got a thing. I don't know what it is. Can somebody please tell me in the comments? I know nothing about trams, but. We have look, what looks to be a snowplow thing, and then that probably just breaks it up from the wheels. Same cannot be said for the back, instead we've got a box along with that switch. Air. I'm guessing that's an air thing. We've got more air things and brake pressure things. So, that's really it for this abs uh, little tiny tram. Let's get this on the layout. So here we have the tram on the layout. Um. It looks very nice on the layout, definitely sticks out when I have it on, but um, I'm just going to quickly show you how tiny this thing is. I'm just going to move it along, going to get uh, one of my smallest locos, which is the B2 Packet. It's one of my... S and... Uh, mm, massive. Uh, the B2 Packet finally feels big. But, um, obviously a train's going to be bigger than a tram anyway, but... Just thought I'd show you that to show you 187 scale versus 176. And um, so right now it is on DC, uh, DCC power. So I'm just going to show you the two functions that it has. I'm just going to quickly switch my lights off in the loft so I can show you it. There we go. Turn the lights on. Yeah, you can just about see that. I can make the lights brighter and dimmer. Which is quite nice. Yeah, it has lights, it has... Well, I'll explain in a second. Ugh. So this tram does have lights. It has um, headlights, but... Um, this sense headlights stays on for... A f for some reason, but the other one switches on and off depending on direction. It does have coach lights, which is quite nice, and um, that's it really for the functions. And uh, so I'm just going to show you some running shots of it now. So let's do that now. So let's. Just...
Now it is time for my final verdict on this model. Whether it's a must buy, wait for a sale, or completely avoid. For me personally, if you're a UK modeler, avoid it because their prices are high and they're very scarce in the, in the UK. Uh, but say if you're a US modeler and you can find them easily for a fair price, I'd say get it. It's it's a great little model to have and definitely perks up a little layout. And and same for the UK really. If you can find it in a model shop for a fair price, get it. Because it, it, once again it's a great little piece of kit to have. So that, that's it for this review. Thank you for watching and, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.